So our first step is to add the pencil sketch. We will need to add a mountain and we'll just need to add a line at the bottom to separate the lake and the meadow. I will start by adding a line a little above the center of the paper and that's where I'm going to add the mountain. So just add a simple straight line. And now we can add new mountain. Go with a very natural and organic shape. Don't go with a simple curve. You can add in some ups and downs in between to make your mountain look more interesting. Okay, so that's a mountain. Now I'm going to add another line here where I'm going to add some trees. Okay, so for now you will just need to add a line. Now I'm going to add another line at the bottom. Just a simple irregular line to separate the lake and the meadow. So that area at the middle is the lake and what we have at the bottom is the meadow. Okay, so that's a pencil sketch. It's a simple sketch. There is nothing much complicated here. You will just need to add that mountain. The rest is quite simple. Okay, now let's start painting. And you all know the color that I'm going to use for the sky. I'll be using a medium tone of cerulean blue. You can use any other blue. It doesn't need to be cerulean blue. And I'm going to go with a wet on wet sky. So first I'm applying a coat of water onto the sky. To paint the sky, I'm going to use a flat brush. You can either use a flat brush or a round brush. Go with a medium tone of blue, which will be the blue that you're using. Okay. Now I'm going to just apply some lines onto that wet sky. It's a very simple sky. You just need to drop in some lines using a medium tone of blue onto that wet background. When you're adding the lines, try to leave some wide gap in between. This will make your sky look more beautiful. Okay. So once you have applied water onto your background, just add in some lines using a medium tone of blue. If you want, you can go with a gradient wash where you have a medium tone at the top and a lighter tone over the bottom. Or you can go with a cloudy sky as well. Now I'm adding few more lines onto the sky. The ones I added earlier is not really visible. So I'm just adding few more. And that is it. Now we have to wait for this to dry completely before we go with the next step. Alright, so the sky has dried completely. Next, I'm going to paint the lake and the color that I'm going to use for the lake is cobalt green. If you don't have cobalt green, you can use any other pastel green or blue that I've got or you can just use a lighter tone of turquoise blue. Okay, so I'm going to squeeze out a bit of cobalt green onto my palette. First, I will be applying a solid wash of this color onto the entire lake. Then I will add some lines closer to the mountain using a bluish green to indicate those reflection. Okay, so I have taken out the paint. Now I'm using a medium sized brush. This one is size number 8 round brush. I'm washing it properly so that there is no other paint on it. We need a clean blue for the lake. Don't add a lot of water, go with a bright color. See that? It's a gorgeous pastel green. Now I'm going to apply this onto the entire lake using this medium sized brush. I'm nearly done adding the paint. You can see how bright and pretty it is. It's a gorgeous color. This color brings in a different mood to your painting. So I would say it's a gorgeous color to add in your collection. Now I'm going to pick some sap cream. I'm not washing off the paint from my brush. I'm directly picking some sap cream. And I'm adding some lines closer to the mountain. You can turn it into a little bluish color by adding a little blue into it. It can be any blue. It doesn't need to be cerulean blue. Don't use a paint which is too watery. So if you feel like your brush is too watery, tap it on a paper towel and keep adding some lines. If the paint is too watery, it will spread into the background in a very vigorous way. We don't want these lines to spread a lot and that's the reason why I told you to dab your brush on a paper towel or a cotton cloth. Now keep adding some more lines right underneath the mountain using either sap green or a bluish green. When you're adding the reflection, try not to go with a darker tone. Go with a medium tone like this. Don't make it too dark. And also, we don't need to add a lot of reflection. You just need to add them right underneath the mountain. You don't need to bring them towards the bottom. The major color of the lake has to be still that cobalt green or cobalt blue. Now I'm picking some more cobalt green. 
and I'm just merging the color. I feel like the color is a bit lighter. So I'm just going with another coat and I'm making the color a little more brighter. This step is really optional. If you're already happy with your background, you don't need to add another coat. I just felt like the color is a bit lighter. I want the color to be really bright and beautiful. And that's the reason why I'm going with another coat. Okay, so just in case, if you want to make it more brighter, go with another coat of Cobalt Green or any other blue that you are using. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to add a few more reflection right underneath the mountain. So I'm going back with sap green and that bluish green and I'm adding some more lines. As I said, we don't need a lot and don't go with a darker tone, go with a medium tone. Okay, so that is it. I think we can call it done. I'm pretty happy with the colors. Now let's leave this for drying. Once it dries, we will paint the mountain and also the floral meadow. Okay, so let's take a short break and leave this for drying. Our next task is to paint the mountain. For that, I will need some indigo. So I'm just making some space for indigo first. I'm just wiping that paint with the paper towel. And I'm going to squeeze out some indigo onto my palette. I already have some sap green on my palette. Okay, so we have the colors ready. Now I'm going to start with the medium tone of indigo. And I'm going to add that onto the top of the mountain. Almost till half of the mountain, I'll be using indigo. And towards the bottom, I will switch to sap green and I will add that onto the remaining area. You will have to go with a medium tone. Don't make it too dark or too light. Okay, so I'm picking some medium tone of indigo and I'm carefully applying that onto the mountain. You already have an outline there. Follow that carefully. Okay, so we need that sharp shape for the mountain. Almost to half of the mountain, you can add an indigo. It's just a medium tone. You can see the color here. Don't make it too dark or too light. The color has to be bright and pretty because when the watercolor dries, it will tend to fade a little. So in the beginning itself, you'll have to go with a medium tone. Now I'm picking a medium tone of sap green and I'm applying that onto the leftover area. This is our base layer. Once this dries, we will be adding some details onto it. We'll add some lines and some texture to make it look more realistic. Okay, for now you will just need to add a medium tone of indigo on the top and a medium tone of sap green at the bottom. The color that you're applying right now doesn't need to be a clean blend. It can have some rough patches in between. That's absolutely okay. Anyway, we will be adding some dry brush patterns and some details onto this. So how the background is looking right now doesn't really matter. It can be messy and it can be rough. Okay, so the base layer is ready. Now we'll have to wait for this to dry to add the remaining details. We'll be adding some dry brush patterns and some medium tones onto this to make it look more realistic. Okay, so the base layer has dried. Now it's time to add the remaining details. We need to make the mountain look more realistic. And for that, I'm gonna use a medium tone of indigo. And to add those details, I'm gonna use a smaller size brush. This one is a size number 400 brush. Okay, so I'm picking a medium tone of indigo, a color which is slightly darker than the color we have used in the background. And starting from the tip of the mountain, add an irregular line. Okay, now I'm using another brush which is slightly wet and I'm smudging the color. I don't want those darker tones to be too prominent. That's the reason why I'm doing this. Now onto this drop, I'm going to add some darker tones and I'm going to do the same thing. Using a wet brush, I'm smudging that color. So if you closely look at your mountain, the shape of the mountain you have added, you will find these kind of little ups and downs. Onto all those area, we are going to add some deeper tones and we are going to smudge that. Take it slow, don't rush. Go to all those pockets and add some deeper tones. And using another brush, you can smudge that. If you don't add these deeper tones, your mountain will look quite flat. It wouldn't have any texture. So this step is really important to make your mountain look more realistic. 
So pick all these little pockets you have in your mountain and add some deeper tones over there. If the paint is too prominent, you can smudge that with a wet brush. You can already see the difference between the right side and the left side. The left side is looking more realistic compared to the right as we have added more deeper tones and we have added some texture over here. That's the main reason why we should be adding this. So don't skip, take it slow and add some deeper tones wherever you want to, especially onto those drops you have in your mountain. The same process can be used for any other mountain that you're painting. It doesn't need to be blue and green. You can use the same technique to paint a brown mountain or a snowy mountain or even a completely green mountain. For the top, you can go with a medium tone and towards the bottom, you can go with a much more darker tone of green and you can use the same step to paint a gorgeous mountain. Okay, so make use of the techniques that you're learning in today's painting in your future projects. Now I'm picking some sap green and I'm just adding that over here. I feel like the color is really dull and light and I think there is something wrong with my paper. I'm not sure if the paper has lots of sizing. You can see those weird texture on my paper. Anyway, I'm just going to fix it. I'm not going to change my painting. And again, I'm dropping some more taco tones at the bottom. I will add some more taco tones. Then I will smudge that with a wet brush. Those darker tones I added right now is looking quite prominent. I don't want them to be too prominent. So I'm using a wet brush and I'm smudging that color into the background. Okay, so this side is done. Now in a similar way, we need to add some medium tones onto the other side as well. If you want to add more deeper tones, you could do that. I'm just adding some more lines over here using a lighter tone. Okay, and a little over this side as well. That looks good. In a similar way, I'm going to add some texture on the other side as well. On this side, I won't be adding a lot of darker tones. I will use a medium tone. Okay, now using that medium tone of indigo, I'm just adding some lines, just some random lines. Some of them are thick, some of them are thin. And I'm just adding that towards the bottom. I'm not going to add a lot towards the top. Okay, so towards the bottom, I'm making the lines more thicker. My intention is to just add in some lines and bring in some texture to get rid of that flat feel of the mountain. It doesn't need to be smooth and perfect. You can simply add in your lines. Be sure to use a medium tone. Don't make it too dark. Concentrate more on the top. Make this area really clean and neat. Towards the bottom, you can just drag those lines and leave it as it is. Because at the bottom, we'll be adding some trees. So these patterns we are adding right now won't be visible. Okay. So focus more on the top. Over here, you can simply drag your brush and create some random patterns. It doesn't need to be clean and neat. Okay, now I'm just going to add some greenish tones over here as well. So I'm dragging my brush from bottom towards the top and I'm creating some lines. Okay, so that is it. We are done with the mountain. Now we'll have to wait for this to dry and we'll need to add those trees to make it look complete. For now, this is all we need. I'm not really sure what is wrong with my paper. Because the sky looks fine, only the mountain looks a bit weird. I have some messy texture at the bottom of the mountain. Never mind, I think when we add the trees, it won't really show up. Anyway, let's leave that for drying and we can start with the landscape at the bottom. For the base layer, as we discussed, I'll be using leaf green, sap green and intico. So I will use a bigger size brush to add the paint onto this area. I need some sap green. So let me take out some green onto my palette. By the way, I got my favorite green. I wasn't happy with the green I got from Winter and Newton. So I was eagerly waiting for this to be back in stock. Okay, so I'm using a bigger size brush and I'm starting off with some leaf green. This one is a size number 12 round brush. You can use a bigger size brush or a medium size brush. I already have a bit of leaf green over there. I think that would be enough. So for this area, there is no particular rule or method that you need to follow. You can simply drop in a lighter green, then a medium tone of green and a darker tone of green. It doesn't really matter how you're applying the paint. Because onto this, we'll be adding some leafy pattern and some grassy lines. And at the end, when everything dries, we'll be adding some flowers onto this. Okay, so just don't worry about how your background is looking right now. It's not going to affect your painting. So I have added some medium tones and lighter tones onto the background. Now we need to introduce more of darker tones. To add the deeper tones, I'm going to pick some indigo and I'm going to add that at the bottom. You can add those deeper tones along the bottom line and also towards either side. 
okay so pick a generous amount of indigo and add that onto the wet background and keep adding more darker tones at the bottom on the top you can leave those lighter tones and medium tones as it is onto the bottom you can introduce more of darker tones okay you can see how messy that background is looking but never mind trust the process and keep adding your taco tones until you feel like you're happy with the result so just like the mountain we are trying to create some texture and some patterns here we don't want a flat and plain background okay so i have added enough of darker tones and medium tones onto the background for the next step i'm going to pick a smaller size brush and i'm picking some sap cream and I'm going to create some grassy lines on the wet background. So keep pushing and pulling that paint and create some grassy lines. Just some random ones. You will have to do this while the background is still wet. Don't wait for that to dry. Keep adding those lines and create some texture here. Now using the same tone of green, I'm going to create some patterns and texture over here along the top line. So first I'm just adding some dots and using a wet brush, I will smudge that into the background. I just want to create some texture here over it looks quite plain. Okay, so just keep adding some dots over here. I think we can use a medium tone, we don't need to make it too dark. I'm going to do this for this entire line. It's just some random dots and some patterns. Once you are done with that, you can wash out the paint from your brush and go with a lighter tone of green and just match that color. So all these are going to be the texture in the background. We don't want them to be too prominent. That's the reason why I'm smudging them. Okay, so go with a lighter tone of green and smudge that. Okay, so the entire background layer is done. Now we need to add more details to make it look more realistic. We'll need to add those trees as well as the flowers. So let's take a small break and wait for this to dry. All right, so this is where we have reached. Everything has dried completely. Our next task is to add the trees in the background as well as the flowers in the foreground. We'll be just adding some lines over here right underneath the mountain. We'll be adding them close to each other to create a group of trees. Okay, so let's do that. Now to add this, you will either need a brush with a pointed tip or a smaller size brush. Don't go with a bigger brush. We want those lines to be really thin. I'm going to go with a darker tone of green. I'm just mixing a little of indigo with sap cream and using that color. First, I'm going to add a line just to define that area. So along the bottom line of the mountain, add a thick line using a darker tone of green or you can just use indigo as it is if you want a really dark tone. Okay. Now onto this, I'm going to add some lines. Just keep on adding some lines close to each other and fill up that entire area. You don't need to put a lot of effort here. You can simply keep on adding some lines close to each other. When you fill up that entire area in similar lines, you will really get a feel of trees. Okay, so keep on adding them. I think you can already feel that. We are done with the right side. I'm going to make the lines shorter as I'm approaching towards the center. So on the right end, I will have taller trees and over the center, I will have shorter trees. Okay, now let's keep on adding some lines and finish this entire line. So just like I said, over here, I'm using smaller lines. So it really feels like on the right hand, you have taller trees. And as you're approaching towards the center, they are getting shorter.
Okay, so this side is done. Now in a similar way, I'm going to add trace on the other side as well. Okay, so with that, we are done with the trees. Now it's time to add the flowers. Before we add the flowers, we need to add some more texture here. And for that, I'm going to go with a darker tone of green. And I'm randomly going to add some leafy pattern and some grassy lines onto this background using that darker tone of green. And it's just some random patterns and we are going to add the flowers on top of it so that there is some texture in the background, okay? So it's a combination of some grassy lines and some leafy pattern. You can add them in a very rough and messy way. You don't need to put a lot of effort. As this is going to be in the background, we are going to add hundreds of flowers on top of this. So these patterns won't be really visible. We are just trying to create some texture in the background to make it look more interesting. Okay, so just keep on adding some dots and some lines and some messy patterns like this. You can use a medium to under darker tone and just add some patterns you can see how carelessly i'm adding them i'm not putting a lot of effort i'm just randomly going around and adding some leaves and some lines so my intention is to just bring in some texture here as i said these are going to be in the background on top of this we'll be adding a bunch of flowers let me show you the finished painting so that you will have a better idea of what i'm talking about so here is our finished painting you can see those patterns in the background, the green patterns and those beautiful pink flowers on top of it. So this is the reason why I told you not to put a lot of effort. You can simply keep on adding some random patterns. It can be a very rough shape. You don't need to put a lot of effort adding each and every leaf. Just keep on adding some dots and some patterns using the tip of your brush. And along with that, you can also add some grassy lines to bring in more textures. Okay, so keep adding them until you feel like you have got a texture there. And once we are done with this, we can add our pink flowers. All right, so that's done. Now it's time to add those gorgeous pink flowers and finish up our painting. I don't have enough space on my palette, so I'm just gonna clean up this section using a wet paper towel. I'm dipping my paper towel in some water and I'm wiping that paint. And there you go, I have made some clean space for the pink. Now let's take out the paint. For the flowers, I'm gonna use permanent rose. You can use crimson or any other pink tone. 
or if you want to go with a different color maybe you can use violet or yellow or white or orange any color of your choice if you want the flowers to be really bright and pretty you can also use opera pink okay so go with the color that you have chosen and we need to add some white gouache or white watercolor into it to turn that into an opaque color so i'm just squeezing out a bit of white gouache if you don't have white gouache you can use white watercolor now i'm going to mix some white gouache with permanent rose to create an opaque color and to add the flowers i'm using my smaller size brush this one is a size number two round brush go with any of your smaller size brush so that you can add smaller dots okay so i have created that paint now comes the fun part i'm going to randomly add some pink dots onto this entire area i'm going to add hundreds and thousands of them i want this entire area to be filled in pink flowers so it's just some dots close to each other it doesn't have any particular shape or size i'm going to add them close to each other to make it look like there are some bunch of flowers okay so go with any of the color you have chosen add some white gouache into it it can be crimson or violet or orange or yellow or even white it can be any color of your choice. Add some white gouache or white watercolor to turn that into an opaque version. If you feel like the paint is really thick, you can add few drops of water. And then use a smaller size brush or a brush with a pointed tip. And keep on adding some dots like this close to each other to make it look like there's a group of flowers over there. It's easy and it's fun, but then it might take a bit of time as we have to add quite a lot of them. So anytime you feel bored of adding these flowers, take a break, get it from your seat, go for a walk or grab coffee and come back and add the remaining. This is the brush that I'm using. It's a size number two round brush. So go with any of your smaller size brush or a brush with a pointed tip and keep adding some tiny dots close to each other. It would be better if you can go with a bright color. Don't go with any dull color. You can use crimson instead of permanent rose or you can use opera pink if you want them to be really bright or you can use some vermilion try to go the bright and vibrant color so that they will really stand out because for this entire painting we have just used blue and green so far so the color that you're using for the flowers is what going to make your painting more catchy so try to go the bright color it can be any color of your choice now let's keep on adding more and more dots I'm not lifting my hand, I'm just adding as many dots I can in one go. So you can see here I have two different tonal values of pink. I have a bright pink and a lighter pink. That just happened. It was not intentional or it wasn't a deliberate action. The first time when I picked the color, it was really bright. And the second time when I picked the color, I think I added some more white by mistake. So I got two different tonal values of pink here. But then I feel like those different tones are adding more beauty to a painting. So I think it would be nice to use different tonal values of pink. At some places you can use a darker tone, I mean a brighter tone. And at some places you can add some more white and make it lighter. Okay, now let's keep on adding these dots and try to fill this ACP. All right, so that is it. We are done adding the flowers. You can see how pretty it is looking. I cannot tell you how much I love this painting. That lake and those pink flowers are looking so good together.